Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do a Metroid Prime creepypasta called She-Goth. Ah, the Metroid games. One of my favorite gaming series in existence. Samus Aran was my favorite female video game character, and I loved playing as her every time I put in a Metroid game. And above all, my favorite Metroid game was, uh, Metroid Prime. That was the first Metroid game I had ever played and what introduced me to the series. I was in the process of moving into... Slatington, Pennsylvania, and I didn't own the GameCube. I had it home with the family. It belonged to my brother. But he did let me take the Metroid Prime game because he knew how much I liked it. GameCubes uh, don't cost that much nowadays, so I planned on getting one after I moved out. A few days later, I took the bus to the mall in Whitehall, a few miles away. There was a video game shop there at the, t uh, at the time that I left. Game Trader was what it was called. Sadly, it's closed uh, during the time I'm writing this. I thought it was better than GameStop as it had older games as well, and they really made sure your product worked before selling it to you. <laughs> I wish it had remained open. Anyways, I went inside and asked for a GameCube. They'd left one in stock. It had some dents, but it was still workable. The man who stood behind the register told me to double check and make sure the GameCube worked and asked if it was alright. Uh, I told him yes, and I waited while they checked the console. It didn't take them long. Within about 10 minutes, he was back out with a console in hand. He put it in a bag and asked me to pay for it. It was only $30 uh, since it was so old. Upon purchasing it, he handed me the bag and uh, wished me a good day. I exited the mall and returned home. I couldn't wait to play the Metroid Prime game again. I know I beat it so many times and knew where all the items were and such, but hey, I love it. I hooked up the GameCube to my small CRT television and turned it on. Something was strange though right away. The GameCube logo that came out every time you turned the console on was slow and jerky, as, it was, as if it was a lot of memory for the console to just process. It didn't make any sense, but maybe the console was just, you know, a little old. It did work just fine after that jerky intro, though, so I didn't think it was anything to worry about. You know, it's just an old console. The dents did more damage than I thought, maybe. I started a Metroid Prime, I gave a smile as a start menu came up, and just as I thought, it was playing normally. It did have an, uh, I did have an old game I never finished, uh, but to complete the experience, I decided to start a new game. I selected a start a new game option. I watched as the game faded out, but something was strange. Rather than zooming in like it normally does, it briefly showed me an image of a she got before doing a burn away transition. Despite the initial weirdness, the game played normally after that. No bugs or glitches. It was just like how I had remembered it. For the past two days, I played the heck out of that game. I advanced quickly, getting all the power-ups uh, I could as soon as uh, possible. With no distractions, I made it to the She-Goth boss at the uh, Chapel of the Elders quicker than I had expected. The She-Goth boss was one of my favorites, and I loved the She-Goth design. It was so cool and kind of creepy. I moved Samus towards the wave beam to trigger the battle. As the platform lowered and the cutscene played, something, was, something new was wrong. It was nothing too bad. The wrong music just played. Instead of the normal music for this point of the uh, in the game, the phase-on area music for later in the game started to play. It was a little slower, but other than that, it just worked fine. It was unusual, I thought. I chalked it up to the console again. What else could it be? My copy of the game was fine. I found it was a little harder to move. The buttons on the controller were less responsive than they had been before. Despite this, I managed to defeat the She-Goth babies that spawned in the room. I waited as the wall broke down, revealing the true boss, the adult She-Goth. This is the first area you encounter them, and boy, did they leave an impression. The massive behemoth towered over me, cold liquid dripping down its fangs. I pummeled the She-Goth adult with my missiles, the only way to kill the thing. It always took forever. It had a lot of health, more so than the other adults that would appear later. I dodged its icy breath as I continued attacking, and I missed a couple times, but despite that, I beat it within five minutes. The adult fell down to the ground, and the wave beam came up. I walked over to the platform and picked up the wave beam. The game glitched up immediately and it skipped over the usual cutscene that should play, and no dialogue box came up. I was about to re reset the game, but the glitch disappeared and I was in control of Samus once more, thinking no nothing of it. I sat down and continued playing. Another cutscene had started to play. It wasn't of anything I'd seen in a Metroid game before. It depicted the baby she burying the larger adults. This was very similar to what happens in Super Metroid, where Dragon, upon defeating it, is buried by smaller Evers. But why was this happening in Metroid Prime? Was this a bonus cutscene that was never supposed to be played? And if so, how did I trigger it? The game let me have control of Samus again. I went up to the purple door and whipped out the newly obtained wave beam. When I pressed the attack button, it produced the sound of a lightning strike, as a three jagged black and purple energy shot out. I pulled my head back and stared in shock. Since when was a wave beam like this? 
Then a dialog box came up. It read, Wave Beam has been improved. Now you can kill your foes with greater ease. It closed immediately after I read it, with no option given to read more about it. Kill? That didn't sound like something normally present in the game. Yes, you did kill, but the game never talked about being better equipped to kill enemies. What the fuck was going on? I exited the temple and headed back out into the first area of Pendrena Drifts. Pendrena shorelines, all the while, the Phazon area music kept playing in this loop. But now it got even slower. But still, it sounded pretty normal. Well, as far as slowed music is concerned. <laughs> the snow appeared to fall even heavier now. So thick it was, I could barely see where I was going, and there didn't appear to be any enemies, a glitch most likely. I walked through the snow and towards the elevator that would take me back to Magmore Caverns. Upon going through the door, I came face to face with a cave-in. Blocking the path out, I switched to the scan visor and saw that there was uh, some information about these rocks. I scanned them and a message popped up. It read, Magmore Caverns is inaccessible. You are currently stuck in Pendrainer Drifts. Inaccessible? How's, how's that possible? There are many entrances to Magmore, surely one of them has to work. But sure enough, no matter which elevator I tried, there was a cave-in covering either part of the elevator, or the elevator itself, or the path. Each time I scanned the different piles, the same message would pop up, telling me I could not go to Magmore Caverns. This meant I was really trapped in Pendrena Drifts, as there was absolutely no other way to get here besides through the magma-filled underground cave system. I decided to return to Pendrena Shorelines and tried to think of my next move. It was not, I was not able to leave the area, so I had to find something else to do. Maybe the problem would be fixed later on. I went on playing the game. The only thing out of place uh, as I played through was the Phazon area music still playing and the strange lack of she gods. I managed to get the super missile and thermal visor, and it was time to face another boss. I would have felt nervous, but I hated Thardis, and I wanted to defeat him as soon as possible to get it over with. Without a second thought, I headed down to Quarantine Cave, where I knew he was waiting for me. Yet upon arriving, the pile of rocks that should have been there weren't visible. Instead, the spikes of an adult sea goth were visible. But that was impossible. I hadn't defeated Thardis yet. I was supposed to get rid of him first, and then a she goth replaces him. Nonetheless, it was kind of nice to see an adult she goth. I was starting to miss them. I jumped down and prepared to take on the ice monster. The adult she goth that rose up looked different than any other she goth I saw. It was a dull gray purple instead of the usual light blue. It also had an appearance strikingly resembling a Grinchler from Metroid Prime 2, but still managing to look like a She-Goth. And as it moved, it didn't lumber as much, and moved with about as much grace and ease as the Grapple Guardian from the second game. The music finally changed, and this time it was the Kozo Ghost music. Luckily for me, the attack moves were the same, it charged me and snapped its uh, jaws at me. It mo I, I moved Samus out of the way and proceeded to shoot its mouth as it hyperventilated. I didn't know how long this was going to take, as it had no health bar, just like the uh, first she got the adult. It was taking even longer than the first battle to take this beast down. When the final missile hit it, the purple beast struggled to stand up. I expected it to fall over, but instead it remained standing. It shook itself off as the battle did nothing to it. My eyes widened at this. My missiles were very low by now, and I couldn't leave this area without the spider ball. I didn't know what I was going to do now. The purple she got stomped towards me, emitting a low growl, but then it stopped just in front of me. Even though it seemed impossible, a text box appeared. It was like a cutscene. But I could still move Samus. I moved her back as I read the text. The music changed yet again, this time to Frigate Orpheum. And looked, uh, and like the others, it was slowed down. So, you're the great Samus Aran, savior of the galaxy. I don't believe such words. You have a cold disregard for the life on the planets you visit. Tell me, does it make you feel good when you slaughter wild animals? Did it make you feel good when you killed my mate to get your fancy new weapon? I shuddered at this. I couldn't understand what was going on or what the she-goth was talking about. Mate? Perhaps it was speaking of the other she-goth, the uh, adult, I defeated earlier. Even though my gut told me to stop playing, I was very curious and just pressed the A button to continue reading what the she-goth said. I've heard so much about you, both the good and the bad, but mostly the bad. Brutal she got pressed on. I know you had uh, killed Kraid's child so you could enter his lair, I know you electrocuted Dragon in front of its babies, and I know you had uh, killed countless other animals, regardless of their threat level to you, all in the name of... Progress. I had no idea the she goth could have known this. Chronologically, none of these things had happened yet. I still felt a cold chill run down my spine as I read the text. Suddenly, the cutscene from before, of the baby she goths bearing the adult, made more sense. They were burying their parent, just like... Evers buried their parent, Dragon. The adult she got suddenly seized me with its large foot. I don't know how it could have pulled this off, but I watched as it held Samus in the air, squeezing her body with its foot 
and looking down at her with non-existing eyes, a feature that just made me shudder. Cold steam plowed out of its mouth rapidly. Samus grunted in pain as it struck her. The she-goth could have c continued, but instead it returned to speaking. You are no savior of this or any world. You see me as a monster, but it didn't go f but I didn't go from planet to planet wiping out life. I'm not the one who destroyed an entire region, then later an entire world. I'm not the one who tried to make extinct an entire species. The she got squeezed Samus tighter. I heard her struggling to breathe. I tried to struggle free, but the grip was too tight. The she got continued rambling, and what it said next made my blood run cold. I will allow you to defeat me. <laughs> but you will never be able to leave this place. This is my gift to you, Samus, the murderer of the galaxy. You will not be alone, but you will not enjoy this company. I will not kill you because you don't deserve death. I will not show you that kind of mercy, murderer. I dropped the controller right there and then, and I stared blankly at the screen. There appeared to be more text, but I didn't want to read it. I felt my hand start to shake. I never saw Samus as a murderer. She was just doing what she needed to do for the good of the galaxy. I never thought she was going too far. After all, she only killed in self-defense. Didn't she? I looked back at the game, even though I hadn't pressed a button. Samus had pointed her wave beam at the purple she got. I watched in horror as she shot at its head. It released her and staggered back, letting out an almost demonic scream. Its body turned charred black and it disintegrated. It was no different than killing a baby she got with a plasma beam, but somehow, here, after what happened, it looked far more gruesome and chilling. It took me several minutes to get the nerve to leave Quarantine Cave. I ventured through more of uh, Pendrena Drifts, hoping to find something to take my mind off what happened. But as I moved through, everything was gone. All the animals and the space pirates, they were just gone. Pendrena Drifts started to feel much lonelier now and depressing. I went back to Pendrena Shorelines there. I noticed about five baby she goths and a few of the smaller, though still large, adult she got. They weren't buried in the snow, they were walking through slowly, their heads lowered as if sad. They saw me but didn't attack. As I came closer, all of them turned to face me. They stood still, staring at me even though they had no visible eyes. The music in the background continued to grow even more depressing as I approached the eyeless she goths. Even though I pushed against them, none of them moved to attack me. Without being prompted, the she got babies began to speak. It was just low growls and hisses. But the game provided a text box. One of the babies had said, why? Another had said, why did you do it? The third one said, why did you kill our mama? The fourth one said, did we do something wrong? And finally, the last one had said, if we had been bad, we're sorry. I looked up at the adults. They hadn't said anything. They just stared at me. Despite having no expression, they looked at me as if they were looking disapprovingly. At least one of them almost looked at it like it was poised to attack me if I dared harm one of the babies. Feeling guilty, I turned around and tried to leave. I attempted to exit, but the same pile of rocks was there. This time, when I scanned it, it simply said the she goths didn't want you to leave. I examined the console's dents and noticed, barely visible, were some scratchings. It resembled the language of the Luminoth. I looked up online to see what it read. Slowly, I translated it and shuddered by what it read. It was just a single word. She goth. I looked back at the screen. I let out a scream at what I saw. Samus had her head turned to me, but her face looked just like... SAX's face from Metroid Fusion. As a sharp pang of dread shot through my stomach, I turned off the console. I laid there, panting heavily as I allowed what had happened to sink in slowly. I hadn't played the game for weeks after that. I eventually got the courage to start a new game. Haven't had any incidents like that happen again, but now none of the animals attack me. Not even any of the bosses, as they would do. All is just stare at me, silently, watching my every move. Well, 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 another Metroid pasta bites the dust. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. Anyways, how, wa how was it? Quite decent. Now, cliche-wise, it follows similar tropes such as game it use chop, visible damage, and slowed music. I hate these tropes most of the time, most of the time, but here, because we have a protagonist that has no knowledge on the affair, you know, computer you know, how these technicals work, it makes sense. That and the fact human psychology is represented appropriately here when you see curiosity enter the picture. You know, I mean, when you see creepy shit, we always want to press X, you know. A lot of us do say, and even I do say at a time, too, if this stuff happens, turn off the game. Not really. If you realistically saw it in a game, you'd go through with it, okay? To the point where it started becoming more and more scary and, uh, you know, leaving you scarred. But anyways, moving on. It works, and I see nothing to complain about in that regard. Now, what I really love is the referencing the Metroid past. Although chronologically it doesn't make any sense, even mentioned in the tale as well, it still haunts you to know what Samus Aran fundamentally is. 
Now, there are two camps that can be formed on the, Samus is a murderer, not a murderer, but, you know, let's not divert focus from the matter at hand. It's decent in that regard, and when you see the sobering reaction of all the other monsters in the creepypasta and how they react to Samus, you begin to worry and become more intrigued in the events as you start to think what really could happen next with such tension, so you keep reading on and on and on. Now, the end, with the console having the markings which translated to she gots was a trope that I hate. But it was better than having an unrealistic event with hyperboles of blood and gore and, uh, you know, Satan, even though demonic presences do make an appearance here, up the ass. Now, I'll be returning to one of the things I used to do a lot in the past, and assess the reality of the situation using my background in computer hardware and software, and ask if it can be real. Well, let's assume the slowdown at the very beginning of the boot up was due to the console, you know, uh, damage. You really have to ask yourself. See, the GameCube may be an older system, but it's not old to the point where it's going to choke that bad if the OS is loaded. And if it's that, if it's the damage that's causing it on the system, it, ha it has to have fucked with the onboard memory on the GameCube which stores the OS. And even then, 99% of the time, with that kind of damage, it would leave the system unusual. See, see, even a little bit of, not even a little bit of static, static in general can kill these parts, and if you had just, you know, rough wear and tear damage, I don't know how that would really affect it, but since it is hardware, if software OS files got damaged, those are so critical, those structures, those file structures, that it would, it wouldn't, you wouldn't even be able to start the console, it'd just fuck up, die, there you go, rather than slow down, that just seems kind of weird. I mean, it possibly could happen, anything is really possible in the world of computer science, but that just seems a little unreasonable, at least to me. Now, mind you, I'm not the, I'm not like, Bill Gates level intelligent, but, you know, that's just what it looks like to me. Now, the game, the game itself could possibly have been hacked, and music data, at least, could be replaced with slower variants. You see that sometimes, uh, with a lot of games and a lot of mods, that you can do that. The game menu could be played around with so much, though. But as far as cutscenes and complex things really go, not not really. I mean, there there's so much possible in modifying the game that you can do, but you still need its source to do really, really complex things. And the Metroid Prime modding community, although it's present, it's not huge to reach the levels of complexity. I mean, you're not seeing this kind of complexity with things like Grand Theft Auto or Minecraft, where they have huge mod communities. I mean, you do, but in the sense, you do still see that mod inside it. So in short, not really. That being said, <laughs> it's a nice creepypasta, and I thought it was good for the most part. What would you rate it, and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.